as uh, we all know, at uh, the Society of Neuro-Oncology meeting uh, this year, we are having a new report on the long-term data for the EF14 uh, study. And EF14 study was the study uh, that uh, was instrumental for the obtain approval for newly diagnosed glioblastoma patients. The way on which the study was uh, designed was designed as a randomized study where 695 patients were allowed to complete the radiation and the temodar, and then they were randomized two to one uh, to either receive the combination of optune and temozolomide, followed by at recurrence whatever was the best uh, treatment their oncologist choose, in addition to the optune, which was continued up to two years. The other group of patients was uh, treated with standard of care treatment, which was temozolomide, followed that progression by uh, whatever treatment was considered to be the best by the oncologist. The EF14 study had um, uh, two uh, major endpoints. The primary endpoint was progression-free survival, and the secondary endpoint was overall survival. For the progression-free survival, the determinations were made by independent radiologists that were blinded to the assignment of the patients to each treatment group. The results showed that the patients that have received the optunin combination of stemadar had a progression-free survival from randomization of 6.7 months as compared with four months on the, on the group that received temozolomide alone. For the overall survival endpoint, the combination group Overall, a medium overall survival was 21 months, compared with only 16 months on the group that has received the standard of care without the optune. Those data are very, very similar with the previously published data on the interim analysis, which makes us even more confident that the treatment is working as it is supposed to be working. I think the most uh, important point that I want also to, to highlight is that the use of Optune also uh, in this study increased the number of people that become long-time survivors. So if we look at two years survival, the percentage of people that lived at two years as co uh, for the combination group was 43% compared to 30% in the group that was treated to standard of care. Even more important and rewarding for us is that at four years, the number of patients that survive in the combination group was 17%, as compared with only 10% on the group that received the standard of care treatment. So when we talk about the safety profiles on the EF14 study, we have to remember that every patient in the study got radiation, got amazolamide, and at progression got more surgery or more radiation and another chemotherapy drugs based on the oncologist's preference. So it comes as no surprise for us that the side effects on the two groups are very similar because we see that side effects that we always have seen with chemotherapy such as temozolomide. We see some uh, nausea, we see some uh, decreased uh, platelet counts and white cell count. Uh, we see seizures and depression, very common for the patients unfortunately with brain tumors and equally distributed between the two groups. We see headaches, same discussion, very well distributed between the two groups. What is different for the group that received Optune is that there is a small number of device-related side effects, which all of them are local. This device uh, is composed of electrodes that get applied on the scalp, so we can see some mild inflammation, some mild erosion at the level of the electrical device. The other things that we have seen a little bit uh, more are uh, problems with falling, and this is again related to the fact that the device has a cord. Some of the patients uh, can also, when they are home, instead of using the battery, plug it to the wall. So we want to be very careful to let the patients know that they have uh, to pay attention where they are in space and make sure that they don't fall and institute safe fall precautions. So the EF14 trial, and I do you know, have a very special place in my heart for this because I think everybody as an oncologist would like to participate in a trial that makes difference, difference in their, our patients. And I have to say, 
um, and I have a tremendous gratitude to Dr. Stoop and, and the company um, and, and you know, Tufts Medical Center for having opened up the trial too as well uh, for me being able to participate in it because it really has been the single biggest advance in the last decade in the treatment of these patients. And I want to just sort of talk about a little bit of the misconceptions that are out there. And I think these are coming from people that didn't participate in the trial and also had a very, you know, almost in, innate sense like, how the heck is this going to work? And I have to say, I, had one of the, one of the, I was one of those patients myself. I mean, not patients, one of those uh, doctors myself. I was like, oh, this sounds like a crazy idea. We're, we're going to send people around with this little cap on their hand and cook, kick them up to a battery and hope this cures GBMs, which, are such a, which is such a deadly disease. And I have to say I was wrong, but I have, when, I look at, and I, when I look at the, uh, the data, it's, it's amazing to me how wrong I was, and I'm so glad to be wrong, because you know, everybody wants these trials, all these trials to work, and I'm glad this one works. Uh, other things that I've also heard about the trial was that you know, people are confused about how the trial was designed. It was a very simple two-to-one randomization trial. You know, it was basically two-thirds of the patient got the device, one-third the pa pa with temodar and radiation, and one-third uh, just got the temodar and radiation. Uh, the other thing I think people also are uh, maybe misunderstanding too, that people were matched, you know, based uh, on performance status, surgical resection, MGMT methylation, all the things that we know are prognostic indicators. So uh, I think it was a very fairly done trial. I think it was in a large population of patients, and they proved it. And I think we're all scientists, and I think we should, you know, take a look at this data very carefully. It's published in JAMA, it's out there. They'll publish the uh, final analysis, I'm sure, in another journal here pretty soon. Uh, but realize that it really has very uh, little side effects except for the skin reaction. It doesn't cause your blood counts to drop. It doesn't cause you any nausea or vomiting. And it can be easily uh, combined uh, with other treatment modalities without any detriment to the patient. And I think it should be offered to everybody. In my opinion, this is without any doubt the standard of care. It is included in the NCCN guidelines. It is an FDA-approved treatment, and it's making a major impact in the patient's survival. Let's just look at the four-year data. Going from 10% to 17%, it's a significant step. It's almost a doubling in the number of patients that get to celebrate four years after their original diagnosis. Going back to what we talked before, the addition of Temodar gave us two months in the original study. So I think that this should be incorporated on the practice. I think that we should all work with the patients. It's in the end the patient decision, but I think the decision has to be made with the patient fully understanding that this is right now the most uh, promising FDA-approved treatment that we have had for a while.